Father, we thank you for your word and your blessing and your peace in our lives today. We thank you for your anointing upon us and we just give you the praise, Father. You are doing what you want to do in our lives and in this service today, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, it's Father's Day. And of course, I'm going to preach the message on Father's Day. More well, so I thought. And then the Holy Ghost said, no, you're not. You're preaching on the wisdom of God. I said, okay. So we'll do that. In, in Proverbs 4, <clears throat> the Bible says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Do you know that hasn't always gone down well, that scripture, when I preached it? I do remember a lady telling me, uh, <clears throat> about a week after I preached something about that scripture, that her then boyfriend uh, said, uh, I've, I've, had it, I've had it with him, talking about stupid stuff, he said, wisdom is the principal thing. How could a wisdom be a headmaster? And she had to explain that there's two different ways of using that word. Uh, you know, the thing about being the principal thing, it's the first in order of importance. If you're going to list things about God in order of importance, guess which one comes first? Wisdom. It's the principal thing. If there's ever a choice, wisdom should come first. Always, no matter what's going on, wisdom should come first. If you ever go out looking to get something, let it be wisdom you're looking for. Especially God's wisdom. I've had lots of examples of how God's wisdom works. One of them particularly was when our lovely Haley uh, had been injured and she was in hospital. And I was there one evening praying and reading the word over her and this male nurse came up to me and said uh, would you excuse me I need to change some dressings on Haley. Uh, if you go down to the family's room I'll come and get you when I'm finished. I said yeah sure okay. So I went down to the family's room and carried on praying and this gentleman came back to me and he said it's okay you can, um, you can come back in now. I said oh thank you very much. So, what's the prognosis then? What do you reckon? He said, we're not holding out much hope for her at all. Now I could have gone, oh that's sad. How long do you think she's got? You know, and I could have said, you know, oh that's really awful, that's really terrible, I must tell my family. You know that, do you know what that word that he gave me? Worldly wisdom. Now, on the wall behind Haley's bed was a piece of paper. Like that one with a picture of Haley, and a prophecy that had been spoken over Haley a few months earlier from God through Robert Marsbach. And one of the things he talked about, he didn't know, one of the things he talked about then was Kevin, Haley's husband, talked about her being married. She wasn't married, didn't mention Kevin by name. You know, I, I know the Holy Ghost is good, but I haven't seen that come up yet. <laughs> You know, uh, it mentioned the husband, mentioned all sorts of things about her that hadn't happened yet. So, as we walk back to Haley's bed, rather than take on board what this man had said, I said, do you see that piece of paper? He said, yes. I said, that is a prophecy from God about Haley's life, including some things that haven't happened yet. It's not possible that she should die. Why? Because the wisdom of God through that prophecy said there was a future for Haley. It can't not happen. If she's going to get, if that Bible is talking about a husband for her, she's going to get married. She can't die. It's impossible. God said it was going to happen. Do you understand what I'm saying? That was the wisdom of God. That scripture, those, those words of prophecy, that is the wisdom of God where Haley was concerned. This man gave me what he considered to be a, a wise statement. We're not holding out much hope for her. Thank God we didn't have to hope in what he was hoping for. Thank God we knew that God was going to do something about it. Amen? 
Now the key is, there's a lot of wisdom out there, so-called. There's a lot of people who are very wise, but if their wisdom is not in line with God's wisdom, guess which one you should be believing? You should always be believing God's wisdom. And it says, while you're doing this getting, get some understanding too, it said in that scripture. Get some understanding as well. See, wisdom is knowing what to do with the information you already have. Right? Or, it's straight wisdom from God. Would you know, know anything about anything? He just gives you the wisdom. Understanding here is discernment. Especially being aware of your source of wisdom. When you hear something that's supposed to be wisdom, know where it comes from. Use your understanding that God gives you to discern where it's from. Is this from the world? Is this just from some professional person? Or is this actually from God? And we need to know that our wisdom that we're operating in is from God. Amen? Hallelujah. Now when it comes to getting wisdom, the Bible says again in Proverbs 9.10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Before you start out on your journey to get wisdom, make sure you're in the right place with God. Make sure you have a reverential awe and respect and in the right frame of word, fear of God. We're not afraid of God, but we have a fear of God in an awesome reverential respect in that you don't want to get things wrong where he's concerned. Not just for you, not just because of sin's sake, because he's so wonderful, you don't want to do things wrong, do you? You know, it's like when you're buying some, a present for somebody, most people who buy a present for someone will take some time to do a bit of research and find out what it is they like. Yeah? Which is why most people, you know, get blessed by that. Because they take time to research things. The thing is, God knows you already. But how much do you know him? And the more you know him, the more that wisdom is going to be readily coming into your life. See, wisdom begins, it's really saying here, wisdom begins in the same place as Jesus' lordship begins. If he's the lord of all your life, you can have wisdom everywhere. If he's only the lord in certain areas of your life, you can't have wisdom in the other areas. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And you know, when it comes to wisdom, the way you talk about wisdom is you're usually asking somebody who is an expert, how? A question about wisdom usually starts, how? How are we going to sort this out? How are we going to do this, Lord? When you're asking how, what you're saying is, you don't know. You're making a declaration, if you're asking somebody else how to do something, you're already making a declaration, you don't know how to do it. And this is wonderful, because now you're placing yourself down, and you're lifting him up. You see what I'm saying? As soon as you're asking God how, as soon as you're asking God for wisdom, you're lifting him higher. Because you're saying, I'm down here and I don't know the answer. What is the answer, Lord? Please help me to sort this out. And the other thing we can do is, Find out how God handles things. What he said about it. You know, I've been able to do, I've been a practical person all my life. My father was a practical person. He taught me some fairly practical things. And I went to the, to the army and did another practical job. There's some theory attached, but mainly practical. And the way I learned most of it is to watch somebody else, see how they did it. Do you know how to find out how God handles things? Read your Bible. You'll see examples in there of problems that occurred and how God handled it. You know, we just heard earlier on about a scripture where people started attacking Israel and God said, I wouldn't if I was you. I don't like people attacking my kids. You know, God already knows that if you're doing things right, you're going to get wisdom from him. Amen? In Exodus chapter 35, verse 35, 
It says, he, that's God, he has filled them with skill to do all manner of work of the engraver and the designer and the tapestry maker in blue and purple and the scarlet thread and fine linen and of the weaver and those who do every work and those who design artistic works. That happened, that statement, those sort of words are in the Old Testament quite a few times. Many times in the Old Testament, especially when they were designing and building uh, the Ark of the Covenant or a sanctuary or a temple or the tabernacle or anything like that or the, the ephod that the priests wore, whatever it was God gave the people, the craftsmen, the wisdom to be able to do it. God was asking people to do stuff in a lot of cases that had never been done before. Now when you as a craftsman are being asked to do something that's never been done before you're going to need some wisdom. You're going to need some wisdom from somebody who actually does know how it's done. So God gave his wisdom to all of these craftsmen who could then do the things he wanted them to do and make it look really good. I don't, I've never seen the Ark of the Covenant, I've never seen the ephod, I've never seen the things they made in those days, but I do know from the Word of God they were excellent. They were absolutely first class you could not have made any of those things any better. Why? Because the people who had been asked to do it by God were being given his wisdom to do it. And you know, if God is asking you to do anything, whatever he's asking you to carry out, he, along with it, will give you the wisdom to do it. He will never, ever, ever expect us to be wise enough to do something he's asked us to do. He knows we're not clever enough. He knows he is much wiser than we are. And you know, when uh, other people apart from me as well, but me, when I was working here and we were doing, this is for months on end, and we were doing the re renovation of this place from just a shell into what it is now, and I did a lot of the work where the electrics and stuff like that were concerned, the number of times I'd be halfway doing something and I'd stop and I'd go, oh, I've run out of how to do it, how to do that, I don't know what to do next. I have no idea how to do the next bit. And I just say, Lord, what shall I do now? I usually need a cup of tea to make sure that got into me properly. And I'd sit down with a cup of tea and I'd get wisdom from God. And a couple of times, on a couple of occasions, I was doing something and somebody said to me, oh, that's brilliant. What made you think of that? I said, they didn't. I asked God and he told me what to do. You see, God wants us to be blessed with the ability to do the things he's calling us to do. He wants us to, to shine as people who can do stuff for him. How can you do that? Because you've got his wisdom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In, in 2, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, I'll try again, Chronicles 1.11, God said to Solomon, because this was in your heart and you have not asked riches or wealth or honour or the life of your enemies nor have you asked long life but have asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself that you may judge my people over whom I made you king wisdom and knowledge are granted to you and I will give you riches and wealth and honour such as the kings who were before you nor shall any after you have the like Solomon was asked by God, what can I do for you Solomon? And Solomon could have said, uh, I want loads of money, loads of wealth, um, I want you to kill all the enemies for us, uh, and then we'll be great. But he didn't. He recognised that God had put Solomon as the king over the people. And he recognised this was an important job for him to do, so he said, I want wisdom. I've got these lovely people you've given me, I need wisdom as to how to look after them. So God said, wonderful, I love the fact that your heart is for the people I've called you to. So I'll give you that wisdom, and I'll give you that knowledge. But since you didn't ask for wealth and riches, I'll give them to you anyway. And you know the Bible says he was the richest man that ever lived? The richest man that ever lived. And I think that's probably still the case. I know there's people in the, in the world, and I can name some names, they've got billions. This is back then. Solomon had a lot more back then than these guys have got now. 
and the wealthiest people in the world were coming to see him and the so-called wise people were coming to Solomon and asking for wisdom you know the kind of wisdom that God gave him I remember one time in the Old Testament these two ladies came to Solomon with a baby and um, they were arguing and one of them said no it was mine that died and the other one said no it was mine that died and these two women had been in the same room and one of the babies had been smothered or something had died and the other one was alive and they were both arguing it was it's my baby that's alive it's my baby that's alive and they came to Solomon and Solomon just sought the wisdom of God and he said yeah the answer is simple uh, let's get a sword we'll chop the baby in half and give them half each you think that's a bit silly of course it's silly because he knew it wasn't going to happen so the babe the person who's who's the mother of the baby and knew she was the mother of the baby she said no give it to the other woman no I don't want it to kill give it to the other woman and so them said no you have your baby you think that's a bit strange yeah wisdom sometimes is the wisdom from God just doesn't line up with normal stuff when God is asking you to do something please don't expect it to line up with the norm it's not going to I'll show you another scripture about that in a minute but you know God is expecting us just to follow him blindly yes without any questions yes because he knows best I don't know if you noticed that you ever noticed that yeah. I've seen a lot of people who thought they knew best I remember a, a gentleman telling us about some some project he had all organized and he was going to do this he was going to do that and he had it all down on paper it was all going to work all wonderful and uh, we just happened to say to him so when did God tell you about this oh no 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 didn't God hasn't said anything so do you, you don't have an okay from God no no I don't need that I know how to do this I know how to do it no please please don't please go to God we said and check with him first no it's okay I know how to do this it utterly and completely failed every aspect of it I was sad for him because he didn't listen but he needed God's wisdom and not his own see Solomon said I don't want all that I just want the wisdom to be able to look after your people Lord why because he was operating in humility and humility is linked very closely to receiving wisdom if there's any pride involved in you trying to get wisdom you won't get it you won't get it at all no pride involved he knows best and we don't amen <coughs> in 1st Corinthians going to do move across 1st Corinthians 2 6 how about we speak wisdom among those who are mature yet not the wisdom of this age nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory which none of the rulers of this age knew for if they'd known they would not have crucified the Lord of glory when it comes to us speaking about the things of wisdom of God we might as well be speaking to the people in this world in a foreign language because they don't understand it we probably didn't understand it I certainly didn't understand it when people started talking to me about God uh, and I'm thinking I, I knew better I could understand that they got a belief but they were wrong and I knew better because I was using my wisdom they weren't they were using God's wisdom the wisdom of this world it says here comes to nothing all these people who are spouting all these things that is about what should and shouldn't happen and yeah if you you do this we'll sue you and you do this and we'll we'll take you off broadcasting for this television program or we won't allow you to be the head of this department or something it's all gonna fall apart because the wisdom of this world comes to nothing the wisdom from God outsmarts everybody the wisdom of God outsmarts everybody it certainly outsmarted me a lot of times you know when God has directed us to do a certain thing in a certain way there's no way we'd have thought how to do that no way we would have ever thought how to do that ourselves the thing is the reason it outsmarts everybody because it's shrouded in mystery 
You think, mystery? What does that mean? Yeah, but it's shrouded in the mystery. Do you know there's only one, the mystery? Do you know what the mystery is? The mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is the mystery. People talk about the mystery like it's all mysterious and we can't understand it. I can understand it. The mystery is, because it's the mystery to the world, that is. The mystery is Christ in you and me, the hope of glory. We've got hope. We've got hope. We've got the, the source and the author of hope in our lives. In Colossians 1.27, you need to know that scripture, it says, the mystery is this, Christ in you, the hope of glory. It says here, if the devil had known, if the devil had known, if he killed Jesus, a whole new race of people would be born, born and reborn again and everything, a whole church would be planted. If he had known that, he would have done everything in his power to stop Jesus being killed. He would have protected him to the end. Didn't know. He didn't understand what the mystery was. He thought, here's a troublemaker, we'll kill him off. And God said, brilliant, that's exactly what I want to happen. Because it doesn't line up with sense, does it? It doesn't line up with human common sense to have the person who can sort all your problems out, let's have, let's have him killed. And God says, yeah, that's right. And you're thinking, but that doesn't make any sense at all. No, it doesn't. You wouldn't be here if it made sense. Because if it made sense, everybody would have gone, no, we're not doing that. Jesus was allowed to be killed. He rose again. That's what the devil didn't know was going to happen. He didn't know Jesus was going to be born, uh, born from the dead and rise up again and pay the price for our sins. The devil is really stupid. I don't know if you've realised that. When he's, when he's encouraging you to do something that's wrong, he's really stupid because God has already provided a way out. You know, he wants you to bless you. God wants to bless you. And if you don't seem to have any wisdom at all at the moment, or in a certain area, James 1.5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him that means if you ask God for wisdom you will receive wisdom there's plenty of it about he said it, he's got it, it's liberally freely given whenever I need wisdom I ask God for it and I get it every time sometimes I don't even have to ask it's just given. I'm doing something for God and he gives me the wisdom and I just get on with it. But sometimes we just have to say, sometimes we're praying about somebody and we just have to say, oh Lord, what, what do we pray about here? What's, what's the score here? What, what we need to be focusing on? And he gives us the wisdom and it works every time. This wisdom is a free gift. It is a free gift, but only if you ask for it. If he hasn't already given it to you, you need to ask. Why do you have to ask? Because it proves you don't have it. It proves he does. And that puts him above you again. So you, it puts him in a higher place again. Every time you, you put him in a higher place, you put yourself in a better place to receive. Amen? Asking proves you don't know it, and he does. Asking shows, asking for wisdom shows this. Who really is Lord of your life? If you never ask God for any wisdom about anything, you're still in charge. That's not a good place to be. Now this is a statement that God gave me this morning. <clears throat> never asking for wisdom is not wise. <laughs> never asking for wisdom is not wise. Because the wisest thing you can do always is to ask God for his wisdom. And you know, there's a way you can tell if it's God's wisdom or not. Because James 6, 17, sorry, 3, 17 says, But the wisdom is, that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. 
God's wisdom is always good. It will only bring good into any situation. And the key is, it's from above. It's not from down here. It's not worldly wisdom. It's from above. Above what? Well, above you and I for a start. Above, we, above everything we can ever ask or think. There's no way we can ever work stuff out like he does. And the wisdom that comes from him comes in purity. It comes with peace. It comes with gentleness. It can yield. It's full of mercy. It's full of good fruits. And you can trust it. You can trust it. You will feel the peace of God coming into your heart when you know it's the wisdom of God and not the wisdom of man. And it will always bless everyone, especially you. If you're the one asking for the wisdom and you're receiving wisdom from God, it will bless you ultimately in every way. And everything that it touches, everywhere it goes, every effect it has on every person will be a blessing. Any wisdom, anything you hear like that, that brings strife or fear or doubt is worldly and never to be trusted. If when you're being given so-called wisdom, this is what I think, if somebody says to you, this is what I think you should do, and it brings fear or doubt, it's not from God. Immediately say, oh, come on Lord, what's your, what's your take on this? What do you say about this? Cast it out, don't let it get into your life at all. And in, oh, I thought I'd put that scripture up, I didn't. 1 Corinthians 1.30 But of him are you in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. If you need wisdom, just get Jesus involved. Get Jesus involved. Ask him how you should do things. Ask him the best way to do things because Jesus has been made wisdom. It's not just that he knows, it's just that he has the wisdom. He is wisdom. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life, wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, redemption. He is all these things. So when you get in, get Jesus. Get Jesus more into your life than he has before and more wisdom will come into your life than ever before and you were blessed to be, be blessed to be a blessing. Wisdom is the principal thing and I believe today God wants us to be looking to him much more than we ever have been before for wisdom. Whenever there's the slightest little doubt in your mind as to what to do or even if there's no doubt, check with him anyway. Sometimes we have no doubt that this is the right way, this is the right way, and it's absolutely wrong. But we thought it was right. Check with him, he knows best. Father, we thank you for your word. You've brought wisdom into our life today. You've brought wisdom into our life through Jesus and through your word. Help us to continue in that wisdom and continually ask for it, to receive it in every problem and every circumstance we find ourselves in. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.